Hello and welcome. Today we're gonna hit the road with some brick laid street tiles using silicone and a texture roller. I saw Jeremy over at Black Magic Craft do this and I just had to give it a try. I start with three by three grid tiles, but don't worry about the height just yet. We're gonna lay down a roadmap here for street tiles in this video and sidewalks and curbs in a second video. So to start, I'm gonna put three millimeter by two millimeter N52 grade neodymium magnets in the very corners. This will be the top side. You don't have to be exact with this, but make sure they're all facing the same way. I make mine here a universal north within the scope of my terrain, which is whatever I have decided is north. Then we take the road less traveled straight to the silicone. It's important to make sure you get a paintable silicone sealant rather than caulking because apparently silicone caulking is prone to shrinkage. Follow the directions on the tube to open and insert into a caulking gun and then squeeze them out. You really don't need much, and it's better to squeeze too little and add more rather than too much in one go here. Then carefully slick the silicone as evenly as you can. You can see I really haven't used much and it's not very thick. Place it down, making sure you have a paper towel underneath. I'm using a Green Stuff World Bricks Stonework Rolling Pin. You can get these from their Etsy shop, eBay, or use other similar 3D printed pavement, cobblestone, or brick rolling pins. They can be pretty pricey, but I might have a solution for that down the road. Soak the rolling pin in water, drip off the excess, and then line yourself up. I start at the back of the tile, visually identifying two approximate spots lined up with the sides of my tiles, and then slowly rolling towards me, carefully keeping track of my alignment and pressure. Because of how wet the roller is, it should be clear saline without the silicone sticking to the roller, so take your time. The rolling pin also shouldn't slide around because you should be making direct contact with the foam in some areas, unless there's too much silicone overall, which you can also gauge by how much excess you push off at the end. If you find it slides a lot or you have a lot of silicone pushed off at the end, you probably put too much, in which case you can try just immediately re-rolling or leave it be and I'll show you how you can still work with that tile later. Also, if you didn't have enough silicone and there are dips in your impressions, you can actually leave those as imperfections in the brickwork as these sunken dirt patches later. Either way, let the excess water drip off. Then we go to cleanup. I have these little silicone clay tools that I use to trim off the excess silicone sealant. I pluck off some of the partial bricks around the edges and make sure the silicone sealant is flush with the edge of the foam. Then set to the side and rinse and repeat, literally. It took me maybe six tiles of practice to get the depth of silicone and rolling pin pressure consistent. But once you've got a good flow, you can really burn up the road with how many tiles you can make in an hour. Then it's just a matter of time before you get these down for a myriad of town scenarios, including, wait, wait, this reminds me of, oh yes, this video sponsor, Steel and Scale. Steel and Scale is a new and original tabletop role-playing game set in a vibrant, high magic, high fantasy world pit against the relentless advances of science and machinery. Using a unique point-by system, you can create completely original characters out of a variety of abilities to aptly suit whatever magical or mechanical situation you come across. Steel and Scale currently has a Kickstarter going where you can pledge to get your hands on a fully and beautifully illustrated rulebook with over 200 pages of content for you to create your pyromantic Spriggan who's on a quest to construct the ultimate flamethrower. If you still want to learn more, their Kickstarter is calculated to be up until October 31st. Link is in the description. Going back on the road again, we can now paint once the silicone is several hours dry. We'll start with a well-traveled road of base coating with matte Mod Podge mixed with dark brown and a bit of gray paint. Don't lay it on too thick in order to preserve the details of the bricks. I also don't fully know if you even need this step. You can try painting acrylic directly onto the silicone and see where the rubber meets the road. After that, I painted the whole tile again with just that mixed dark brown paint. Then in a few spots, do a tan wash, about half paint, half water, to emulate sand buildup between the bricks. Then we get tedious, painting each individual brick. I paint about a third of them gray, about a quarter of them tan gray mix, a spattering of brown, and the rest dark gray. It's no big deal if you miss a few as well, including any of the bricks that may occur in dips. Alternatively, you can paint a palette and dip, Editing Rachel thought of this? Editing Rachel is unsure. 
any road. From here, we're gonna dry brush some brown and then some golden brown, and then do a dark wash with mainly black and burnt umber. There are plenty of recipes available online. And then a final dry brush coat with a golden brown tan mix. I didn't want the bricks to stand out so much since they're inset in dirt and wouldn't have a nice dusty highlight anyway. Now to address height concerns, if you happen to have made some of your tiles thicker than others, you can level them all out by cutting the heights of your tiles on a proxon or hot wire table at the end of the road. Because of the curb we'll be adding later, I've made all of these tiles 3 eighths of an inch tall. And hey, we've been down this road before, adding magnets. Magnets on the sides will be important for these tiles because the magnets we put in the corners are close enough to repel the tiles slightly. But that's easily overcome by the magnets I usually put on the side, which are the same distance from the bottom as all my other tiles. So everything works together, including the sidewalks and curbs in this next video, which you should definitely watch.